Hi, I'm Jennifer Smith. And I'm Melvin Jones. And we are Women's Health in Black and White. We have been discussing in the previous weeks about birth control, mm -hmm. and we have come to the only birth control that provides any protection against STDs. Okay. Today we're talking about barrier methods, condoms. And this is going to be a hands-on video. We it's get to play. We play. <laughs> so condoms have been used for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, if you listen to our podcast, you heard about my historical treatise on birth control. Um, originally, they were usually the intestines of animals, yeah. goats, sheep, and sometimes enemies, the enemies of <laughs> Romans. Uh, we have gotten a little bit beyond that now. Sheepskin condoms do exist. You can still buy them, but they do not offer protection against STDs. The viruses and bacteria that cause STDs are too small to, to be considered effective with sheep skin. They can pass through that sheep skin really easily. They will protect against pregnancy, but they right. do not protect against viral disease, bacterial disease. So if you want to protect against disease, you have to go with one of these. These are latex and non-latex condoms. Most are going to be made of latex, but there are people with allergies, right. of course, to latex. Yeah. So there are a few choices that are non-latex, and they are usually uh, suprapolyurethane. Mm -hmm. We got two of them here. We, well, actually, we have one uh, example of this. It's the um, skin. Durex makes one, but it's made from the same product. And this is Trojan's version uh, to, for comparison. So for protection against mm -hmm. pregnancy, condoms are about 70 to 80% effective. Most of their ineffectiveness is user it's error. Is, yeah. <laughs> it's when you put them on and when you take them off. Right. And how you put them on. Right. A lot of these come with spermicide. Um, there is the, a very common spermicide called Nanoxonol 9. I am highly allergic to it. So we're not going to be using those, but you can get condoms that are pre-moisturized with spermicide. Mm -hmm. These are all pre-moisturized with something. But, but not spermicide. Not that spermicide. We don't want me to swell up. There are three main brands in this country. There's Durex, Lifestyles, and Trojans, and we've got some samples of, of all of those mm -hmm. here. We're going to take them out, look at them, measure them, because they do come in sizes, but I think that the sizes are mostly as an ego stretch. I was just going to say, I think it's for the guys. Um... I think it is. I think it is. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of difference yeah. when we start measuring, but we'll see. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe. Um, and, then I, and then I've got two other products that are um, specifically designed for women. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about those, too. All right, so what we have here are the three brands of the regular size condom. This one is Durex, this one is Trojan, this is Lifestyles. So we're gonna measure tip to tip. Uh, <clears throat> this one is the Durex. It is about eight inches long. Now, of course, the reservoir doesn't really count, so we're gonna move that a little bit. So it's gonna be about seven and a half inches when you're not counting the reservoir. The Trojan, which Trojans you'll see don't really have the same kind of reservoir yeah. as the other ones. They do have one. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so Trojan from the reservoir to the top is a good eight inches when you're not counting the reservoir. And the Lifestyles version, which we've just both agreed seems it's a little skimpy. skimpy. <laughs> seems a little skimpy. Step it up, lifestyles. Not measuring the reservoir. It is about seven inches. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's definitely the smallest. And it looks to be the smallest around as well. Right. Um, let's see. Let's cut these. So I'm going to start with the lifestyles just because it's closest to me. And we are going to go through the top. Turn it this way. Go through the top here. And then I'm going to cut down along the line, along the, the line of the condom, and we'll measure in the middle. So, right here in about the middle of the condom is where I'm going to measure. And it is, so the packaging says to two millimeters. Let's see. Lifestyle. That's Durex. Durex. That's Trojan. I don't know where Lifestyles with Lifestyles. Okay, let me see. 
And what I get when I measure this shaft is... Uh, it says 52. I got 50, exactly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay, so that's Lifestyles. Let's see what Trojan has on the offering. And Lifestyles was the only one that actually gave circumference. The other ones don't tell us. So we can't not take their word for All right. it. There is nothing on this pack. I gotta tell you, the, the Trojan by far looks like the bigger The girl. Trojan, yeah, it, it visually looks bigger. And this is the regular. Yeah, this is the regular. regular. Yeah, there's, a, there's a magnum over magnum. here. Okay, let's see. So about halfway down the shaft of the Trojan is much oh, bigger on. around. <laughs> That's uh, that's eighty centimeters. That's eight centimeters. Yeah. Eighty millimeters. So much, much Way bigger around. around. Okay, that's Trojan, and this one is the Durex. And again, I don't think Durex has it on here. I'm gonna look just in case. No, okay. it does not. They're all just a little slimy. Yeah. The been married for 25 years. We don't use these. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this one is the Durex. And it is. Wow. Oh. Uh, it's just about as big as the. As the Magnum. As I the, mean, the uh, Trojan. As the Trojan was. I was kind of surprised. I'm surprised. All right, that. so those are the regular size condoms. Now we do have two of the Magnum or. Uh, the Trojan calls it a magnum. The Lifestyles calls it a king. king. A king. Yeah. So these are supposed to be the, the big boys. It doesn't say, yes, it does. It says it on the back. It doesn't say it on the front, but it does say it on the back of the package. The Trojan one is particularly slimy. That really is looped up. Oh, my hands look like I've been <laughs> I know. <clears throat> boiling something. Okay, so this one is the Lifestyles version. This one is the Trojan version. The same visually. Just they do at them. look very similar. Okay, so um, accounting for the res reservoir, I, the Trojan is actually the Magnum was no bigger lengthwise than no, their regular yeah, Magnum. It's the same. It's the same. And the lifestyles accounting for the reservoir is as big as the Trojan Magnum. So they're both eight inches long. Right. Let's see how big around this one is. So if you use the scalpel with the sharp side down. Okay, here we go. So the magnum down here in the middle is going to be in circumference just as big as it was it's in the regular the size. <laughs> They're literally the same. the same size. And the Lifestyles brand of, I guess they call it the King. Mm -hmm. Let's see how big that one is down here in the middle. This we had already sliced into earlier. Okay, so the middle of that is just a little just bit bigger little than the Trojan. Bigger. So okay. this was 80 uh, millimeters, 8 centimeters, and right. this is 10. Yeah. So if size matters to you, lifestyle that's the thing is a little bit bigger. Yeah. So and these are the two that are not latex. This one is a skin brand, and this one is Trojan's non-latex brand. This one is polyurethane, and this one is polyisoprene. Durex has one that is similar to this, made with polyisoprene, and they call it the Durex Real Feel. So my healthcare people probably know the difference between a latex glove and a non-latex glove. Right. And I don't know, I mean, this kind of feels the same way to me. <clears throat> I will say that I've always thought latex gloves fit tighter. And when I'm starting an IV, I'd much rather have a latex glove because I feel like I can feel through mm -hmm. it better. Yeah. So it seems to me like condoms probably work the same probably, way. Oh, yeah, I don't like the way that feels at all. This one actually feels okay. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't like that feels one. Weird. That one feels very stiff and yeah. it's, very, it's very thick. I don't... I wouldn't want to start this, an IV wearing that. No. <laughs> this definitely is not a 
real feel type deal. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. This um, one was, which one? That one is the polyisoprene. Poly, yeah. This is the polyurethane. I will tell you, though, I, I really, really, really feel like one size really, 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 really does fit all. I really right. feel like I can say that with some assurance <laughs> that you can... You can take a regular condom and make it work, guys. Right. I, I don't really care how big you are. I promise one size really does fit all. Yes. <laughs> like I said, it's more of an ego thing for the guys, ladies. They can fit whatever you have. <laughs> There's a brand called My One Condom. Oh, they that. have 60 sizes based on length and circumference. Oh, wow. That seems like a lot. That, that seems like an unnecessary amount, and yeah. I just proved that one size fits all. Yeah. I'm not uh, that brand. Me either. Okay, so when you pull the condom out of the packet, you want to make sure that you kind of pinch that reservoir a little bit. You don't want to put the condom on tightly. You want that reservoir to hang a little bit. That's where the semen is going to be caught after right. you ejaculate. Put it over the head of the penis, making sure there's no air in there. You want to pinch that a little bit. And then you just roll the condom all the way down to the base of the penis. You want to make sure Hello. that you get it to the base so that... It covers the penis completely. <clears throat> Once it's down there nice and firm, it shouldn't roll up, shouldn't come off. You got that little reservoir to catch the semen. Mm -hmm. And that's ready to go. Now, once you have ejaculated, sex is over and you're ready to remove it, you're going to take it off pretty much the same way. It's going right. to roll right up. But in the, in the interest of being as mess-free as possible, once you get to about right here, if you'll just kind of pinch it a little bit and pull it off like that, right. you catch that semen in the reservoir and you don't get it all over your sheets. Yes. And then you dispose of it. Easy peasy. It really is. Very easy. And this is one of the only birth controls around that men can control and partic participate yeah. in birth control with. Yeah. Um, now, even though this is sort of male-driven, um, Women still bear the responsibility of this quite a lot. Right. Most, most condoms are purchased by women. Yeah. But if you want to be a stand-up guy and you want to be responsible for <laughs> birth control, you can buy these and have them ready and participate in being yourself. responsible. Right. <laughs> and you can take care of putting them on and taking them off. And you can be the one responsible for this. And we appreciate that. We do like it, fellas. Now, if you are going to be responsible and, and buy these yourself, there are a few things I would like to ask you to do. Don't keep it in your wallet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one that you've place. got <laughs> in your wallet that you've had since you were 16, throw that throw away. away. <laughs> Go ahead and throw that away. That no longer works very well. You also don't want it to be exposed to a lot of heat. You want to keep them in a kind of cool, dry place. Mm -hmm. So probably keeping them in the bedroom is the best place right. for them. Keep them in your bathroom medicine cabinet, but you really don't want them sitting in your car. Yeah. Uh, and we have talked about, I think we're going to do a little uh, experiment. We're going to leave some condoms in, in some hot places, car and mm -hmm. trunk, and see how they weigh out. Yeah. Uh, the condoms do come in some different thicknesses. Uh, the one that I just demonstrated the application with was called an ultra thin, and it is uh, 0 0.052 to 0 0.057 millimeters thick. To give you some perspective, a human hair is 0.06 to 0.08 millimeters thick. So that's a pretty thin condom. That's right. probably going to be pretty good for feeling, mm -hmm. so to help with yeah, sensation. sensation. Um, and then there's the female condoms, which I have one here. This is remarkably difficult to purchase. There's no place in this town that sells these condoms. We Where know. Did you find we that? asked. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually found these on eBay. Okay. There was a woman from this town who uh, was selling them. Um, she had purchased them for her and her partner to use, and he has been deployed, and they're not needing them uh -huh. right now, so she decided okay. to sell them to us. Yes. Um, we found them on eBay and went and picked them up. This is what the female condom looks like, and you can get them on Amazon as well. Um, it comes out of the package just like the male condom does, kind of all rolled up like this. It's got this little ring here, which is hard, and it helps hold it in place. It, too, has a little reservoir to kind of like semen. And you put it in the same way you put in new for me, actually. You kind of like pinch it. it and push it inside. And then using two fingers, you push the ring up against your cervix. It doesn't really have to go anywhere specific, but once it's inside and you can't feel it, it's fine. Um, this part, you really, it hangs out a little bit. You'll see it, but that's okay. Um, and once you've had intercourse, you just pull it out and throw it away. Same right. way. 
But fellas, just make sure you go inside of the condom. Inside. Of the condom. <laughs> Don't go beside it, okay? Because that's not effective. Oh, um, it can be placed. It can be put in place in the vagina six to eight hours before intercourse. Uh, I would recommend immediately after intercourse pulling it back out because you don't want semen leaking out of it. Right. This other piece of uh, STD prevention is called a dental dam. This is basically just a thin piece of latex or polyurethane that can be placed over the female genitals for oral sex. It does not prevent pregnancy, obviously. There's nothing to it. Thank you. But um, it can be used for oral sex if you want to be very, very safe and not um, expose your mouth or your genitals to something that somebody else might have. Specifically, things like herpes. Oh, I will say that one of the packs of condoms that we bought in preparation for this gave a surprise in box. <laughs> Came with a little vibrating ring for your partner's pleasure. For your partner's pleasure. Comes with a bonus to buying condoms. Uh, We're going to uh, explore some other condoms in a later video. We're looking at things that are ribbed for her pleasure. Yeah. And um, one that uh, supposedly stimulates the G spot. Supposedly stimulates the G spot. We can't wait to explore that. So (laughs) stay tuned for future videos. If you have questions or comments, if you want to tell us your story, Um, If you want to tell us how disappointed you are with the Dental Dam, uh, please uh, like and comment and subscribe on our videos. Share them with your friends. Follow us on our podcast, Afterglow. Um, Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And Twitter. And we're interested in your stories, so let us know.